hasn't historically been done like that. And um, historically, like I, I'm assuming that this show is is sponsored by donations from mm -hmm. people as opposed to as opposed to American Airlines or Laura Scudder or yeah. or Walmart or something like that. So we're actually a bit of a hybrid. Oh, uh, are you? Yeah. The okay. the, the uh, release of Huntley Street on the Global Network is supported by donations, but then the CTS release, which is the station here in this building, is supported mm -hmm. by uh, commercials. Oh, terrific! So we're we're sort of edging uh, into that territory too. Good. Oh. Good. Well. Well, that's that's actually why I'm here because <laughs> because we have similar visions yeah. and there isn't anything like it in the United States. No, and uh, so we're the first ones in the United States going in this in this direction. So we're not going to be a hybrid. Actually, we're going to be 100 percent. 100 percent. Yes. Yeah. Now, when and, uh, when you talk about network, you're actually talking networks. You're buying up more than one network. I understand. Yeah. And uh, you've got a pretty aggressive goal. Um, yes. You're going to be covering uh, all of the U.S. at some point. Mm -hmm. I expect. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we, we, we live in, an, in a new era. This is the 21st century. A lot of the television uh, models and paradigms that uh, mm -hmm. subsist, including this one to this day, were crafted and uh, created in the 20th century. Um, and I'm not looking for any, any dissing of anyone or anything here, Robert, but as, as a man who's going to be influencing the next generation of Christian television, Christian values television, Mm -hmm. What would be the ideal scenario for you if you were creating uh, a program to, you know, to uh, challenge the uh, spiritual hunger and need of uh, a broad viewership? What, and I'm talking about one program. What would it be, and how would it? What would it look like? Uh, it's basically what I'm doing with everyday life, mm. because you have to realize Jesus taught with parables. Yeah, and there's got to be a reason he taught with parables. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Why would he be taught with parables? I, I believe the reason is because a parable speaks truer and speaks deeper and held longer in the memory and in the, in the results than any other type of teaching. Right. If I tell you something, it doesn't mean half as much as if I tell you a story about something that happened. Right. You know, we, we started this conversation with me saying it's all good. Right. You know, there's a parable I've, I've told a million times about it's all good. It's a, it's a Chinese parable about a man who had nothing except a horse and a, and a boy. And one day he, his horse ran away and all the neighbors came over and said, oh, what bad luck you've had. <laughs> the Chinese, Chinese man said, uh, how do you know it's bad luck? Hmm. <laughs> and sure enough, a couple weeks later his horse came, but with him, a whole bunch of wild mares came in. They opened the gate and he didn't have one horse, but he had 15 horses. Yeah. And then all the neighbors came over and said, oh, what good luck you have. He says, how do you know it's good, <laughs> yeah, good luck? luck? You know, so his, his only son's out there taming these wild mares and he's thrown from one and breaks his leg. So all the neighbors come over and what do they say? Oh, what bad, bad luck. luck you have. And, the, and the, the farmer goes, how do you know it's bad luck? <laughs> and uh, and a, a few weeks later, a ward lord comes through town and he, and he, uh, and he drafts every able-bodied man. And his son's left behind because he's got a broken leg. And all the neighbors come over and says, oh, what good luck you have. And the, and the Chinese man says, how do you yeah. know it's good luck? And, and the story goes on and on and yeah. on, and it's called "That's Life." Right. Right. Now people remember that parable yeah. and that story more than anything else. Hmm. In this conversation, they're going to remember that. Hmm. They're going to remember that for a long time because it's a parable. It's a story. Yeah. And um, and so if we can tell stories that reach to the very heart and the core of what makes society work, yeah. what makes Christianity work, what makes the Bible alive, uh, it, it's going to have far more impact than me standing up yeah. and pointing my finger at them and telling them what to do. Yeah. And um, you, you look at the, how, what's, what's Im impacting our kids today, uh, what do they talk about? They talk about the movies. Yeah. What's the big? What's a movie? It's just a big story. Yeah. It's an hour and a half story. Yeah. So, hey, I'm gonna, 
I'm going to tell stories. <laughs> now, part of the challenge would yeah. be to find uh, other young storytellers who can oh, provide the kind of storytelling programming mm -hmm. that you can uh, uh, release on your on your network. Mm -hmm. So you're going to actually that it's not a challenge at all. There's, no, they're they're lined up, ready to tell the stories. That's terrific. It's a matter of there's just never been a distribution system. Yeah. That's the yeah. main problem there hasn't been a distribution system so what I have been doing for the last two years what I'm going to continue to do for the next two years is develop a distribution right. system that can that can truly impact the society now speaking of distribution system your your, uh, your son-in-law is ideally positioned as, as the God tube founder to yes. understand uh, the role that the uh, internet will play in your overall ministry right mm -hmm. Uh, he is uniquely positioned to help us go where we want to go. Uh, he, he graduated from USC at the age of 19 uh, with a degree in, in business, had every intention of being a developer, uh, but it, he had one extra uh, elective to take before he could graduate at that, uh, at, uh, the uni at that university. And, he took a course in television production and that changed his life. He landed up producing shows uh, that were syndicated nationwide and, and uh, became the youngest executive of CBS until he was lured away to start the world's first social networking site called communities.com in the early 90s. Um, and um, then the internet bubble burst and he found himself in a, in a very a uh, very low spot in his life and got down on his knees and prayed and became a Christian and um, went to Dallas Theological Seminary and there he started GodTube. And, uh, and now he's your partner. He's now he's my partner. So he's uniquely, he's uniquely talented in having 10 to 15 years experience uh, in, the, in the network business, television network yeah. business, and then another 10 to 15 years in the internet business and what we're going to be doing is we're going to converging um, the two together because we have a video engine software that's that's very powerful. Terrific design. Now our time's up, but I I, I, I can't stop. I have to ask you this one more question. Your your son-in-law was your second revelation. What was your first? Hmm. Interesting. First revelation I had was um, when I left the cathedral the first time, oh. and the revelation was. Uh, I drove past uh, a piece of property on the 5 freeway in Southern California and, I, and it was, that's where you're going to build your church. And it was a gift of 97 acres. Uh, and that's where I built, built the uh, church, a retreat center, and a, uh, and a school. Huh. That was my first revelation. That's where you're going to build your church. And I remember, I remember going to uh, the, the person who owned that land. I went and asked him that week when I had that revelation if he'd give me his ranch. He said, uh, funny thing is, we already gave it away. <laughs> and, I went to the, um, and, I, and I went to his birthday party. It was on the 4th of July. He invited me to his birthday party on the 4th of July. And they had this big fireworks spectacular and said, happy birthday, John. And then, then they, he, his son pulled out a deed and he gave it to this other organization and the entire time I was walking around kind of laughing and shaking my head thinking I'm the only one who really knows what's going to happen with this property. It's going to go to you. And, um, and then uh, nine months later, huh. nine months later he actually gave it to us wow. and, and we, I spent 20 years there until I went up to the cathedral wow. in 2000. Wow. So. Terrific. Terrific being with you. I uh, so appreciate your uh, transparency and uh, willingness to sit down and just uh, have a good old-fashioned conversation. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jim, a, you know, it, it's, a, it's a pleasure for me. You're a, you're a great host, and, a, <laughs> and uh, I can tell you've been doing this a year or two. And, <laughs> and uh, look, so, so I think you have one gray hair for every interview <laughs> you've ever had done. Actually, so, I've lost more than I have gray. But, okay, yeah. you one, one, for yeah. everyone, you, you, you lose one and then, you, yeah. you, you, then one turns gray. A question I was going to ask you, but I'm out of, so, but I'm out of time. That's how, do you, how do you keep your hair? And Robert Schuler, thanks for coming our way. Uh, I'll tell you the next time. <laughs> <laughs>